So there's no reason to assume that for this example about Lipitor, that each of, of the um, values in um, the 863 patients, uh, each of those people, um, their results for if they have um, their cholesterol levels, if um, there's no reason to assume that they are dependent of each other. So, so we can assume that one, so the, the idea of independence is that um, we can assume independence. And the, and the reason that we can assume independence because we, we, we can assume that one person's cholesterol level does not affect another person's cholesterol le level. That's an obvious um, a, assumption. Um, so, and, and the only reason that we would ever assume that, that there's any dependence in the sampling is if, like, let's, let's say we're, we're using um, um, a, a, a certain, um, uh, like, may, maybe brother and sister, that, that then there would be a dependence there because um, one person may be affected by another because they're from the same family. But uh, it, uh, they, they kind of uh, go together, the randomness of the sampling and the independence. Um, so you can usually um, assume these in most of these problems in the homework. But um, this for second check of the sample, uh, the large enough sample size is usually the most common thing, um, the thing that you'll be dealing with in your checks to make sure that you have a large enough sample size to have a normal um, distribution. So, um, okay, so we're done with our checks. Um, so we're ready to go into step one. So step one is where we go into um, the, um, the Nolan alternative hypothesis. So Reading the problem, so let, let's figure out what part of the problem, number 15, that tells us what type of um, specifically, um, well, let, let's, let's start on this. So step one is, is dealing with our null and alternative. So we, so we always have the same um, sort of information uh, at first. So there's some kind of standard things. So first H0 colon H1 colon, and then since we're dealing with the population proportion, we're always making, uh, we're trying to estimate what P is. So we always deal with the population parameter here. Like in section 10.3, we'll be dealing with mu here. Mu would go here. That's our population parameter. We always have equality here. And then we have some sort of inequality. We'll figure out what that is. And then P naught always goes here. It's the claimed value. So 0.019 and 0.019. Now we just need to figure out the inequality and that's where we need to look into the problem. So um, it's based off of the wording of the claim uh, result. So um, it, it mentions here, is there evidence to conclude um, that more than 1.9 percent of Lipitor users experience flu-like symptoms at the side effect? So it mentions more. So since it mentions more, we put greater than more greater okay so that gives us our alternative inequality um, in our in our alternative hypothesis so now step two that was step one step two is our level of significance right there there's our level of significance alpha equals 0 0.01 okay so what we're saying here is that um, we're going to be testing the claim um, to see if there's evidence to conclude that it's more than 1.9 percent. But how picky are we? How picky are we going to be doing this hypothesis testing? Our pickiness is alpha equals 0 0.01. So um, this is probably, I, I guess you can say this is a little more picky than the typical 0 0.05 level of significance. We want to be even more sure. So you usually want to decide what your um, what your alpha is based off of the um, the probability of making a um, uh, of, of making a type one error the the the, the um, it's the seriousness of making a type one error 
So that um, you're not really seeing this so much because they're choosing your alpha for you, but for your labs and for your final project, you're going to be choosing your own alpha. And you're going to be choosing a lot of this information that's given to you in the problems. And um, you'll be seeing the full use of an entire hypothesis testing from scratch on your projects. So um, not so much in lab one, but but in your final project. And we'll work, you, uh, work up to that. So there's your alpha equals 0 0.01. Step two. Now step three. Step three is where we get into the calculations. Step three represents our test statistic. And our test statistic always for a, um, a um, hypothesis testing for population proportion is a z-score value, as you may remember. So we call this z-naught for test statistic. z-naught is, um, is our test statistic is always um, for a hypothesis, hypothesis test is what we're doing is, is we're comparing, we're trying to see how well the sample matches up with the claimed value. So that's why on the numerator of our hypothesis test, we have H naught, or sorry, H naught, um, we have P hat. So our P hat is 19 over 843. How well does our data match up? So how far away is our data compared to our um, our claimed va uh, value, 0 0.019. So P hat minus P naught. How far are they away from each other? But we can't just simply measure the distance from here to here. We got to have, um, like always with Z naught, we have to divide by a standard amount. Um, so we can figure out how many units it is from here to here. So um, that's why we divide by um, using terminology from s chapter nine. We we are we're dividing by the standard error. So that would be um, the square root of p naught. We're using p naught because we're assuming this is true the 0 0.019 so we're using p naught of the denominator because that's what we're using to use uh, to um, uh, for, for the standard error so that would be 0 0.019 minus 1 minus or times 1 minus 0 0.019 and then we divide that by n okay all right, so this measures, um, and if, if you need help uh, picturing this, it would be good to draw a distribution. I'll do that in a moment on the next page. So you can imagine what's going on here. So um, actually, I'll write it down here, um, a really quick picture in a moment. So 19 divided by 843. <coughs> Excuse me. minus 0 0.019 then we're going to divide by the square root of 0 0.019 times three, and I got a value of 0 0.76 so what this is telling us, Z naught is our test statistic, it's telling us that this value here, 19 over 843, our data is 0.76 standard, DV, uh, standard errors, I guess, above our claimed value. So we're trying to test if this claimed value is correct. And what we're doing is we're taking a sample and seeing how well the, well the sample matches up to this to see if this is legitimate, if our um, p naught is legitimate. So just to picture what's going on, it's always good to draw a picture. 
So what we're doing is we're assuming that this is correct. So we're assuming that the center of our distribution is 0 0.019. And then what we're doing is we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out how many standard deviations is 19 over 843 from our claimed value. So imagine that we had uh, 19 over 843 uh, instead of 19 over 843 we had exactly this. So our data matched up exactly with our claimed value of 0 0.019. Well obviously if our data matches up exactly with our p naught, then that's giving uh, great evidence that that this uh, this claimed value is legit based off of our sample. And notice that um, that the numerator would equal zero, and z naught would in turn equal zero. So we would get a value um, if if we were to standardize this of exactly zero, right in the middle of the distribution. If we if if we were to standardize this distribution because um, our p-naught would be right in the middle. So, um, so I, I, I guess you can say um, our, our x distribution and our z distribution, if we had different labelings down here, we would be labeled at zero. That would be the center of the distribution. And so uh, we would be right in the middle if we got um, our sample data matching up exactly with our uh, 0 0.019. And notice that if our sample data in turn was really far away from 0 0.019, like we got 80%, then that would be really bad. And in turn, we would notice that our numerator would be really large or really far away from zero. And we would be way out here on the tails. So if you think about it, if you're really far out on the tails, that's an idea that we're going to be rejecting the fact that our parameter is equal to our claimed value. So that's why we reject or we fail to reject H0. It's based off of how well the sample matches up with our claimed value. So um, we got 0.76. So that's just, that's less than one standard deviation. Um, uh, above, it'd be three fourths pretty much of the way up above here. So we would expect z naught. We 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 get z naught to be right here. That's our test statistic. Now we need to figure out how well it, it are, are we close enough to the tail or not. And um, so that's where the alpha equals zero point zero one comes into play. And remember, if we're doing a right-tailed test, um, and you can look at your table, and you'll remember that if we're doing a right-tailed test, and alpha equals 0 0.01, um, then our, uh, um, if you remember the, this terminology, critical value, our critical value would be out here at 2.33. So this is the boundary of uh, this would be the boundary of reject or fail to reject. And I'll put FTR. Um, so w would we reject H naught or fail to reject H naught? Now, as mentioned, it's really bad to have a large value. It's uh, or in other words, it's it's not looking good for 0 0.019 if our sample data is really far away from it and in turn we get a really large um, z score or for our test statistic. So we reject h naught based off, off our sample if we are beyond the critical value. In this in this case, and we call this z sub alpha for a one tail because we're doing a one tail it would be z sub alpha over 2 for a two tail, so um, and and that's equal to 2.33. You look up in the back of the book. 2.33. You really can't see that. 2.33. That is our z sub alpha. 
Um, so as we can see, we're located in the fail to reject region because we're located right here with 0.76. Okay, so there we go. We have failed to reject base, and if you remember, um, this is the classical approach. And so um, let's think about now the the. Um, so our result for this, I'm running out of room. I'm going to write it over here. We are going to um, fail. So. We're done with step three. Step three is just calculate the test statistic and the critical value. We did that. So step three is done. Step four is, is to compare. And this is step three and step four of the classical approach. So um, since um, our test statistic, since test statistic, is larger than the, or sorry, smaller below, way smaller, smaller than the uh, critical value, and as, as you remember, we got a 0 0.76 is less than, um, and that's Z naught, equals 0 0.76, which is less than 2.33, which equals our um, Z sub alpha. Since Z naught is less than Z sub alpha, and we're doing a right-tailed test, then we, um, so since the test statistic is smaller than the critical value, and we fail to reject H not. Okay. All right. So, um, and I gave you that um, that flow chart. Um,